Welcome to another weekend here on the platform. My name is Sam Omashaye. My column will be read to you directly. In Europe, we have seen political parties rally like a tenet of faith behind xenophobia and against Islam. In Trump America, many whites turned against minorities, crowds exhaling with curtises. So, sickness can be bad, but it is worse when the sick does not know it. That is APC's diagnosis. Its kind of sickness is family dysfunction. The party acted without a convention. It is like holding a birthday party without a venue, date, or celebrant. When it was clear it could not do without a convention, it decided to adopt IBB's Maradona style. It said it would hold a convention in late last year and reneged. Then it picked a month, this one. It picked no date and venue, but notified INEC. It was like an invitation card to an in-law to a wedding without a date or venue, or even the bride and groom. When it decided to fix a date, it did not state a venue. When it decided on it, it was then it dawned on the caretaker committee it should have procedures and processes. A new controversy is swelling with the caretaker committee. It wants to make governors the monarchs of the party politics. To legalize anything, they first legalize it. The governors are the royals and they must control things by first aggregating their interests. So, they are looking for the party chairman to conspire to postpone the convention. Bunny and others are not explaining to anyone why they cannot decide to hold the convention. Their first instinct is to sit tight and preside over the convention and elections. This way, they would choreograph the proceedings and handpick their men. Their intention is to turn the presidential primaries into a fait accompli. They want a consensus. They are unhappy that the lawmakers did not play planned. The electoral bill does not want consensus. With a flourish of a smile, the president told the television station that his successor is not his business. That is an ostentation of indifference. Buhari knows that if Buni fails, it will be largely a presidential disaster because he puts Buni there. And Buhari, not Buni, is the head of the APC. Welcome to Big Talk. I have a special guest today. It is none other than one of the most literate governors of this generation. I'm talking of the governor of Ondo State, Arakuni, wrote to me. Akeridolu. Welcome to this show, sir. My pleasure to be with you. The last time uh, we spoke, you were on the cusp of beginning your second term. How has it been in the past year? <laughs> well, uh, coincidentally, I'm just about two years now. And, yes. uh, it's 24th of February. Yes. So uh, that means a full year, full course has uh, uh, lapsed now. Yes. So uh, it's good to ask that question. That How has it been? Yes. Well, it's been uh, rough. Uh, because uh, you know we went through the pandemic yes and uh, the slow the economy slowed down and uh, since we came back uh, it's not been too easy for instance for us to pay salaries and co so we have such problems and uh, we had to at least spend some money on security and uh, at least to keep our people safe because if we, we are so convinced that one of the reasons we have voted for is to be to protect lives and properties of our people and uh, their means of livelihood. So that is taking some chunk of money for us to to maintain Amotekun and everything. But I want to probably use this video to thank our civil servants that have been so understanding. Uh, anyway, they, they are part of a sharing formula of all the funds that come, so they have been, they have shown a lot of understanding. And I have given my words to them before I leave, I will pay their full salaries. Uh, what, what what you are saying now is that your your administration is attacked on two fronts. One is security, and the other is uh, COVID nineteen, right. and both of them have come together 
in a very, very uncomplimentary attack. Yes, well, it's, it's supposed to say, it's not something you wish for, but, but when you have matters of that nature, uh, you have slow, the economy slow down, and uh, you now need funds to maintain security. You need funds for many things, uh, like uh, it's not only security. I, I can tell you that we are not slowing down on our infrastructure development mm -hmm. because a number of these contracts have been awarded before second term and before we never knew that with COVID. And those are contracts that had to stretch over years on roads and every and everything. So we are we are. We are, we, are, we are pulling through, and I'm sure that uh, in no distant future, we'll be out of the woods. Now, let's move to um, politics. Now, what is happening in APC and its convention, and the, the fact that even though it's supposed to hold in February on the 26th, there's no sense that even the party is ready? I agree with you. But I, I, don't, I don't, I'm a very factual person. I, we are planning convention for 26th. As of today, as of this day, what we are used to, I mean, I, I have been involved in convention. I had tried to contest me in one before, and I, I didn't just go there to buy a form for whatever office. I would probably, what I did was, you get envelope. The party has, party sat and said, okay, this is what we are doing. Southwest, you take this number of offices, Notice you take this, it's disputed. So when you now get to your own caucus, Southwest caucus, you also dispute to state. Then somebody from that state can take a form. So for, as of today, uh, this has not been done, to the best of my knowledge. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm one of the governors, I don't know. Look at chairmanship of the party. So somebody in the East will buy a form. Somebody in the West will buy. And somebody in the East, and it has not been soon yet. And it has to be zoned. Yes. That's what we, we have been doing. The last time we zoned to South South, when Oyegu was going, we had to pick Oshomale to, con to, to, to finish, mm. to zone to South South. Mm. So if it has not been zoned, how do you collect form? Particularly when people are convinced, for instance, that it won't be in the South. It will be in the North. So somebody from North Central will pick form. There are many of them who are adjusting for it. Yes. Somebody from North East will pick. There are a few. Somebody from North West will pick. And not sent. So what? What happens? It's so uh, there will be chaos. So for me, the earlier we put our ass together, the better. And I think the party can do. We can do better. But we can still clear all this. We can still clear all this order. If, for instance, we choose to have two, three days retreat, that is, governors and uh, leaders of the party stay together in Abuja for two, three days. I resolve it. I resolve it. Everything will be resolved. But the president, as the head of the party, should also have stepped in and created some form of rhythm to all of this. <laughs> the president is the head of the party. The party, however, as a chairman. Albeit, the caretaker. caretaker That's what I'm saying. As I said, albeit, caretaker, we have a chairman. It is when, I mean, just like Yoruba, I would like to call it Yoruba uh, adage. It's a child that raises his hand up that you carry. Carry, yes. So <laughs> if the party is um, is not raising his own hands up. Okay, How will the president it, carry, carry it up? So the party itself, his leadership, must be at the forefront of this. And, I, and I, the president, I know, will have no reason to, to I mean, uh, disagree with whatever the party wants to do. I don't, I don't believe we have any reason. That's where I see it. So the president cannot on his own now say, okay, make this person chairman, make this person secretary. No, 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 no. There must be a, a template that you present to him as leader of the party, and if you ask any addition, you add any suppression, you put to it. The process, we'll yes. yes. There's the process, there's the process. Here's the sense that the caretaker committee didn't want it on the 26th. Could this just be a way of railroading the process out of that 26th and say, well, we just can't meet this, there's no way we can hold it, we have to push it forward? Well, I, uh, I'm not. Uh... I, I attend meetings. To push it back. No, yes, no. Yeah. I attend meetings of, uh, of governors and other other meetings. Yes. The last meeting we had, we were all so firm on the 26th. And the chairman of the Catholic Committee was there. So, and, and he, he never said it won't happen. He never said so. But we do read on the pages of papers 
or news media, new media and co. Oh, they don't want it to happen. But I don't believe so. Seriously, because although what is happening now, what I've been done since all those meetings can give give credence to all those uh, speculations. speculations and uh, assumptions. It could lead to it because. But when we were meetings, the chairman agreed that they will hold it on the 26th. That is, you know, the 26th is fixed for a number of by elections. Yes. <laughs> Even on the rivers and co. In spite of that, we still insist that we do the 26th. Those who are by elections will then come, do their by election and come back in the evening. Part join, of the joint part. Yes. So that's also, it's a serious matter if we could still fix it for by, when we had by elections of state. That means you took it seriously. And I think they will run it, run it through. Right? But because, like everything that is political, most times it's done like fire brigade approach. That's what happens. Which will not be. The, the governors attended the conference, uh, Southern governors, about um, the presidency, which was seen as really extraordinary because it was bipartisan. PDP governors and APC governors. And, and this, Abga. And Abga, yes. And, and the decision was firm that the presidency must come south. There have been all kinds of voices since then, you know, even contradicting that resolution in both parties. Where do you think it stands now? No, we well, see the decision of the South South governors, the decision of Southwest governors too. Yes. Yeah, it's, I, it added them. It's the same. And what we have said, we are not moving. We are, our position is unshakable that presidency must come to South. Because we believe that that is what is fair and that is what is need to do. That what we meet eyes in the circumstances we have found ourselves. Yes, we can trace it back. Obasanjo Joe was president. He left it to Yoradua from the north. He didn't complete. He went back to the east. South-south. Okay, we're south-south, because what I know is that as well as there is not that east. That's it. When it comes to north, if you want to take it to central or east, it's left to you. When it comes to south-west, you want to put it in Ondo or anywhere, it's left to us. But when it comes to south-south, you want south. You want it in the south-south, or Southeast is left to you. That's how you decide. So what I'm trying to say is that, at least, okay, uh, Ebele, Jonathan, okay, say South South, he went there. From there, he went back to the North. North has spent eight years. He should come back to the South. Where it will be in the South is left to God. It's nobody, no, uh, nobody can determine. But it has to come to South. We can't, I said you want to think out with, the, with what I have, have called the existence of this country. And this country matters to most of us. Then let us just toy with it. Hmm. Yeah, it is very interesting because um, one of the candidates said that the constitution, the ground norm, hmm. does not talk about zoning. Talk about zoning. Yes. So he has the right as a northerner to run. In other words, there is law, there is convention, and he's saying it is law and not convention. No, I, I, I totally agree with, with, with that argument. Anybody can run. It's a constitutional right. You have the right to run. But it is for us to decide. And I, and, and I have said so in, in a couple of places. There is no any party that feels a northern candidate will lose. Take it from me. There is no way. The southerners are determined that it must come to the south. So you'll be taking a risk. I won't advise my party, for instance, APC, to field another candidate. We'll be taking a risk. But I will not advise PDP not to pick another candidate. Let them pick it and lose the election to us. We'll win. So that's what I'm, what I, what I'm trying to get at is that it's a choice. It's not, even if we all say it must come from south, Somebody from North can still come up and contest. Nobody can stop it. But the people will decide. And I know that the people are discerning enough to know what is right. And now that a lot of noise has been made about where the presidency should come from, and all of us are now there, right there, 
all over the country about the fact that I must come to South. Everybody is like, we almost agreed in the South that I must come to South. And we also have people in the middle belt who believe you must come to South. At last week, I, I welcomed some, some of them that we are talking about Zonia coming to South. Most of them from Middlebury. There are people in the North, core North, that believe it's going to South. So there are not much, more, many more people who believe that this presidency should come to South than maybe one individual and his supporter who says, his unconstitutional constitution says, I can, anybody can come. I'm, I'm, nobody can, doubts that. You can run and you can lose. Constitution has not said you will win. But the arguments they are, they are, they are advancing is that we cannot, we cannot have a true nation if we keep zoning the presidency. That is, that is a roundabout way of saying that I have the capacity to be, to be president even though I'm a northerner, but let us forget about zoning. Let us look for the most popular Nigerian to do it. Well, even at that, it also brings, it brings, it, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's a very clever way of making a party Adopt a, 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 a adopt a, what do you call it a northerner, and then throw up the ethnic card. Well, okay, well, it's quite possible. My those arguments are are plausible, and I, nobody is faulting it. But they are funny to me. I'm, I'm funny. I'm funny. What 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 do I mean by that? Unconstitutional? How? You live by convention, whether you like it or not. You live by convention. Even in America, hardly, by the time you talk about North and South, I, only a few occasions have you had president and vice president come from the North in America. Mm. You must think about it. There yes. must be the balance. Yes. Even in America, where democracy, where are we copy from? Yes. You have to balance. So we are, we are talking about balancing now. And not don't let any section of the country feel oppressed or feel that they are being used. It's not possible. Don't let any person of the country feel that they are an appendage. We are not an appendage to anywhere. We are suffering. And what I mean, our sovereign, I mean, sovereign, uh, yeah. Yeah, sovereign uh, uh, subnationals. Yes. All of us. And if we have a group who feels that, look, it should come here this time around, so be it. But if anybody feels that, look, no, no, these ones, I know you have had arguments of people say that, oh, some people are into economy, some are into education, we are into politics, we should be leaders. How? What's the meaning? So somebody will not tell us, will not be following others. We cannot, it's not going to work. We just have to be very careful. And I want to talk to our brothers who keep making this argument. Be very careful. Let us work together in unity. There's nothing wrong. We had that situation like that before. After M. Kirabela died. Yes. All of us here in Nigeria believe that the president, the next election must come from Southwest. West. And the two candidates for the two parties came from Southwest. Yes. Obasanjo and Falai. Falai, yes. The two and, candidates yes. came from Southwest. So why didn't anybody come from North and say it was contest? Why did Tofa come and say it was late Tofa? Why did he yes. say it was going to contest? Because that was an understanding. And when Obasanjo was living from South, everybody was convinced that the next president must come from the North. And he picked Yaradua. Unfortunately, Yaradua died. And the vice president, that is law, had to, had to take over. But it was supposed to be not. So the vice president took over. And now, after the vice president spent another four years or two years, six years probably, enough, everybody felt he should go to the north. He went back to the north. north yeah. And President Buhari is there now. So when he was, when Buhari contested with uh, Atiku, how many people in the Southwest went to contest except those who are who are not uh, really really serious about contesting, mm -hmm. like my brother Shogore and others? So those ones are not those are not candidates. Those ones are trying to find the kites. Those are yes. not candidates. But serious candidates were from the north. Yes, and we chose Buhari. Yes, the candidate channel, the candidate channel should come down to south. south. Anywhere in south, we all support. Now the the issue is still is still that. If we were if we were able to get to a situation where we had the um, Palai and Obasanjo, where there was a consensus actually in the country that we should get there, why don't we have that kind of consensus today? Why don't we have that kind of unanimity of thinking today? Yeah, and that's why 
I'm surprised, you know. I, um, it's, not, it's not an easy thing. I, I don't know why. I am uh, I'm, I'm worried. But I want to believe there's only a few people in the North that are saying it can come from anywhere. We have, we, have, we have governors, we have friends who are governors and co. We have our brothers who are in the North. Everybody has agreed that it must come from the South. North has done eight years, let it go to the South. But those who are ambitious, you know, ambition can push you to any, exactly. any to, yes. It can yes. push you over the cliff before you know. You are just there, you just fall off. It's ambition. So I think people who have been prepared by ambition are the only ones who are talking about that it can come from anywhere. Mm. No. It's all, all some some uh, people in the academia yes. say who are, who are who pontificate and tell you that oh it can come from anywhere. Mm. Uh, it's just for ambition. Mm. You know, a number of times when when somebody tells you it can come from anywhere, you have somebody in mind mm. somewhere. Somewhere, exactly. That, that's it. When, okay. when uh, some people can say that when we, you know, those of us who are saying it must come from south, we have somebody else uh, want to zone it for a mind. But yes. it's almost like that everywhere. But those who are saying so. Uh, mostly those who are saying so. Even those, there are people inside that are supporting them yes. because of bread and butter. Yes. <laughs> so, you, so when, if bread, if bread and butter will will skew the system on my on my behalf, let it be. Uh, that's that, that's why. Or if ambition from. will skew the system on my own benefit, so, so, be. so, so let it be. That, that, that's that's what we are facing now. That's mm -hmm. what we are facing. But but I but I can assure you. Uh, most, some most people are determined. Uh, it's not a joke. I hope they won't take it lightly. It's not a joke. It's not that we are just blabbing. We have been at meetings. We have listened to people. It's not a joke. It's, it's not a joke. This country must win one. The fabric of this country, you don't, you don't toy with it. And it's that, look, all of us must participate in it. If it's witchcraft, all of us that are inside that place must know about it. And all of us are there. All the geopolitical zones are part of that witchcraft. So <laughs> if, if you are the head there today, and that person will be the head. So I believe that uh, our, our brothers in the north and those who are supporting them from here will reason sooner than later. I know that, look, this presidency must come from the south. Okay, let's look at uh, federalism. There have been some court cases about taxes and so on. Uh, you, 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 you have been in the in the trenches for these over decades. You know about this. What do you think is the is the state of the of the federal federal structure no, no, system I, in Nigeria? Well, I I'm one of those who say that uh, we run what we run is not federalism. We don't, and I I'm I'm worried about about how most people want to continue, particularly those in government. They don't want to listen to those who are outside. There must be a change in our fiscal policy. Federalism must be true federalism. Mm. This is what some of us are saying, not a pervert one. What we're running is a pervert federalism. For me, as a person, and I've always argued that, look, true federalism, will allow each state at least to compete and move at its own speed. Others will come. But to now say because of federalism we want to hold down, hold back some states and yeah. co, it's not going to work. Allow us. And um, let me give an example. Uh, they talk about minerals. You have the constitutional provision. You know, when the this, uh, land use act is there. It says the land belongs to the state. Fair enough. Now you give land census to people without the state knowing. Yes. And they will go and say they are mining. mining. How? Is that federalism? You don't take the state along? They say we don't find people degrading the lands of his own people. Will they keep quiet? Some under that disguise come illegal miners. Mm. They are there. They even come with helicopters because, because our space is porous. Yes. Our airspace is very porous. It's not monitored. It's at not, all. Uh, you don't even know where the helicopter is going. It just moves. And it comes and lands. You know, you can land anywhere. They have yes. prepared the surface for it. You will come and carry 
gold, carry other minerals, and go away. How? How do we continue this way? And we keep fighting. I give an example again about, about uh, ports. And I said to people, I said, look, federal government must not be the one to decide where a port is. If I feel a port is viable in my coastline and I have people who buy into it, I want to establish it, so be it. It's their money. Yes. If it fails, their money goes down the drain. Talk about China Harbor or Dubai World. Say that, okay, we're ready to build a port here until, until we get clearance from federal government. How? We cannot continue this way. We cannot. I, I don't believe it's right. So I believe that we must sit down to reassess this thing. About fiscal policy, there are too much money in the center. Too much. And we want to borrow money even in, in, in state. The DMO will come there, manage your office, say, oh, you are, you are, you are, you are too exposed. Mm. The federal government too is more than too exposed. <laughs> more than. So, but nobody is worried about that. But mm. if you want to do it to your state, they will, they will, they will put impediments that you, you cannot borrow. If you want to borrow, if your state for development, which you can see, and everybody will look at it, when they will pay over time, but we we'll put some uh, cog in the wheel of progress. So for me, federalism in Nigeria is something we have to still sit down to discuss and be sure of where we are going. Thank you for being on this show. You can join me on my column at www.samomashe.com and on my Twitter handle at samomashe. And until next time, be good.